So now, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. I did a uh, shorter uh, video where we just quickly looked at it. But uh, what we're going to do, first off, we're only going to work with 2 volts. These uh, 7400 series integrated circuits can commonly work with uh, low voltages. And um, so, 74HC14 data sheet I looked at said, uh, I believe, down to 2 volts right there. So I think that's why I set the minimum. Also, 2 volts is just enough to light a red LED, but I'm also going to add a 10 ohm resistor to uh, just make sure if we have like slightly higher voltage or something um, that we don't exceed the current for the red LED and uh, the output of this integrated circuit though um, probably still isn't powerful enough to light the red LED but we're not going to worry about that we're just going to worry about what the circuit does so we have a inverter that is also a Schmidt trigger inverter right here or a not gate right there so if you got a high enough voltage in the output's going to be low connected to ground as best as it can and if the voltage is low enough then the output's going to be high connected to the positive supply as best that it can so it's going to be the opposite so we got a capacitor when the output is charging the capacitor it's going to raise its voltage until it's high enough to uh, set the output low and then it will discharge the capacitor that's the basic principle right there a uh, pretty uh, simple oscillator um, there's not a specific point where you got a high or low input, you have to go up a bit, and then you'll have a high input, and then it's got to go down a bit extra before you have a low output. That's the Schmidt trigger part of it. The hysteresis is that middle ground region right there. Uh, very important. Otherwise, you'll just kind of rattle off at uh, one spot. Um, but you can set the timing with the value of the uh, resistor and the capacitor timing. So, um, again, this is a, a low power integrated circuit. So, um, we are going to use uh, low values right here 0.47 microfarad capacitor now where you see these yellow jumpers those are inputs for the six other the five i mean other not gate uh, schmidt triggers right there and then you have to power it so positive supply to uh, pin i believe that's 14 and then uh, pin 7 negative supply right there so we're going to go to the uh, negative supply with the capacitor and we're not powering anything so we don't have to worry about short circuits these are susceptible to static shock though um, be aware of that. So it's good to uh, ground yourself on metal that heads to ground. So we are to the input, which is above the output. We are not using those ones, so we tie their inputs to a voltage um, just to help stabilize things once we apply power. You can run into a lot of problems with these integrated circuits if you leave an input floating. You can put it either positive or negative supply. So uh, we got the capacitor and then 1 million ohm resistor. So that's going to set the timing. Um, but mostly we're uh, wiring this up first because it's uh, kind of the higher part of the circuit. And um, so it'll be less in the uh, way when we wire up other stuff. So that's it for the timing. Very simple right there. You can use lower value uh, ones to get a faster uh, output uh, change right there. Faster charge and discharge of the capacitor. Or you could go even higher in value um, with uh, one or both of them to get a slower oscillation that's perfectly fine although this load does take from the output so it may influence it a bit so long lead the anode to the output of that uh, not gate Schmidt trigger right there and then uh, we got the cathode down another spot you got to make sure you put the LED in the right direction now we could put the resistor to the uh, output and then have the LED go to ground doesn't matter the order just uh, the direction that the LED is inserted. Long lead anode has to be to where it's going to be more positive when it lights up and then cathode, since it's headed to ground, you want the cathode headed to ground. We're going to put it through a resistor though. And I just figured I would go to this direct connection to ground. Doesn't matter that it's to the supply pin or the negative supply pin, I should say, the ground pin of the integrated circuit. It's a direct connection to the uh, rail there because of that jumper that rail, that rail, this whole thing right there, it's all one connection. So you can put other components to there that are going to connect directly to ground because that pin is connected directly to ground. It's all one connection. And that is it. It's that uh, simple. I think the lamp lamp is at the dimmest setting. And uh, my eyes adjust as do the uh, camera, so it's a little hard to tell um, if it's the brightest setting or not. Um, but yeah, we just uh, will apply power right there. And... Turn it on. Now, we don't have uh, much current flowing to begin with, and then 
just a little bit of resistance anywhere will uh, kind of affect this. So um, we got to kind of wiggle this around until everything is connected good. That's doing so bad right now. I'm going to try going over here. So this breadboard is a cheap breadboard. It doesn't have the best uh, connections as is right there. So yeah, that's better right there. But um, yeah, as you can see here, the uh, power supply is not even uh, registering that it's providing any current. Probably less than one uh, milliamp of uh, current right there. That's the main thing. So technically, I can uh, just take a jumper. Maybe this will improve things and uh, do that. But uh, as we saw in the last short that I made, that um, we can just switch with a transistor. So yeah, even with the jumper to ground, we got uh, less than one milliamp probably right there. Uh, you know, um, if we raise the voltage though, that's going to quickly increase uh, current, although the output does have limitations. So I still recommend a minimum amount of uh, resistance, a little bit, just in case you get a little voltage spike or something. will help clear things up. Um, but in case, the main takeaway is you should pretty much always have something protecting the LED from a voltage. You know, there's a few cases where you can get away where you don't um, do that. But it's a good idea still to have one. But yeah, there you can see. And uh, with the transistor, I was seeing two on here um, when the LED uh, lights up. It takes a little time, though, to get a somewhat accurate uh, measurement of uh, current. So maybe we had a little bit more than that. Um, but with the transistor, this can easily turn a transistor on or off completely, even at uh, 2 volts right there. Um, so that would get the full supply voltage, which is only 2 volts, in this case, across the LED. So you would get uh, more current and uh, whatnot. Be aware of that. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos on post screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.